Nothing's more common in childhood athletics than sprains and strains and soft tissue injuries. And in this case, we've got a soccer player who obviously was coming up to try to get the ball, either rolled over the ball or kicked another one of the players. But regardless, what we know about this mechanism of injury is that there was a sudden abrupt stop and the player collapsed to the ground. Now our first assessment is obviously that he's awake, he's conscious, and he's breathing normally. He seems to be in a little bit of discomfort or even some mild to moderate pain, but he's not in an unstable situation. So immediate activation of EMS or 911 may not be our best first option. We can do a little bit more of an investigation first. And right now what I want to know is, is this an injury that's going to require this, pay, this, this player to go to the doctor or to the ER, or is it actually a bump or a bruise that this player can deal with and they just want to get back in the game? That's the real question, isn't it? And so here's how we're going to get to the conclusion of that with a moderately uh, safe and conservative method of investigation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the player, uh, can do you hurt anywhere else other than it looks like your knee? Do you hurt anywhere? And he shakes his head, no, this is all that hurts. And he grabs his knee. We call this self splinting. They'll do it to their arm, they'll hold a rib, they'll hold their, their knee or their ankle, and in this case, he's stabilizing his knee. What I wanna do, and in this case, he's wearing shorts, obviously, but if they, if they had pants on, I would take my scissors and I would cut the pant leg to be able to reveal the injured part. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for bruising, swelling, deformity, bone ends possibly poking up through the skin or under the skin. I'm looking for angulation that's not normal. And then I'm looking for ultimately an open uh, bleeding wound that has a bone end sticking out, which is the most serious of these injuries when it comes to fractures due to infection risk and, and vasculature and nerve endings and things like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, could you just let me take a look at your knee? You don't have to move it. You can see there's grass stains and dirt, but I don't see any of those, those symptoms that tell me this is a serious injury. I see no bruising, the skin color looks pink, and it looks normal. I could actually take the shoe and the sock off if it didn't cause any more harm, and I could actually look at the toes to make sure there's good circulation coming to the end of the toes. There's no blue toenail beds or purple toenail beds. They're nice and pink. And then I kind of wait to see, does this player want to get back in the game? because they kind of know what's going on. They know if they're really hurt or not. And if he starts wiggling around and watching the other players or checking for mom and dad, that's starting to indicate to me that, yeah, it hurt, but it may not be a serious injury. If he stays here, keeps splinting his own knee, that's when I'm going to assist holding the injury and we're gonna activate emergency medical services and have the paramedics or EMS professionals come out and take a second look. In most cases, if we have the situation going on, we may want to stabilize it further before we move the, this uh, injured player so we don't injure the knee worse, we don't cause any secondary problems with neurological deficit or nerve injuries, and most of all, we want to make sure that this player is in as much comfort as possible and we don't aggravate the injury. Now let's take a closer look at a real practical question. Is it okay for them to return to work or play after an injury? And this is a very basic but a very common sense question that everybody needs to ask themselves, whether it's for school, for work, or for the home. You know, we know that he got hurt initially. That happens all the time. They rub it off, it kind of wears off. It wasn't a serious injury in the grades of injury. It was more of a shock, it kind of torqued it a little bit, maybe it, it hurt initially. But now as he's sitting on the ground resting and I've asked the questions, he begins to start to say, you know, this doesn't hurt so bad after all. I can tell that because the patient is starting to move their own limb. Remember, initially, if it's really serious, they don't want anybody to touch it. Don't touch it, don't move it, I've got it. So we call this self-splinting. 
That's the way I found this player initially. But now as we're talking, he's kind of paying attention to the other players in the background, checking out the game, maybe looking for mom and dad, starts to joke and laugh with his friends. And the next thing you know, I see him starting to move his leg back and forth, wiggling it around. And I say to him, hey, <clears throat> is it feeling better to you? He acknowledges it is. And I say, would you like to try to just stand up for me and see if it hurts when you try to stand? Just be real careful. You can use my hand if you need to. Take it easy there. How does that feel standing up, just standing? If it hurts seriously, then we're gonna have him sit back down and I'm gonna help protect that leg. Or we're gonna get a chair or a stool. Or we might even help assist them off the field. But in this case, I talk to him and he's kind of walking around and looking like, yeah, it's not so bad. Then I say, well, why don't you just do a little circle here? Just kind of put some weight on it. How does that feel? He says, feels pretty good. I, feel, I don't feel like it hurts as bad anymore. And at this point, now time is on our side. And I say, looks like you're doing well. If it starts hurting again, then you come off field and we'll help you, okay? Otherwise, go have fun. He takes off, gets back into play, or goes back to work or back to school. And in the meantime, what we do is we educate parents, we educate the coach, maybe we are the coach, and we make a note of that. There was an injury, we're gonna watch this player, see if it happens again, and if it does, that's when we're going to really assess whether this um, player should be seen at the urgent care center or the hospital.